praise the Lord. The Lord gives to you, and he asks you to give back to him, and he will bless you for it in the name of Jesus. Also, uh, next Sunday, we will lift the uh, uh, mandatory uh, wearing of masks. You don't have to wear a mask if you don't want to. But uh, if you want to, you, you by all means wear your mask. All right. COVID is still alive and, and it's out there. But a lot of people just don't wear them. But you will not be under obligation to wear your mask in refuge if you don't want to. Just don't get too close to me. <laughs> Only kidding. <laughs> Praise the Lord. All right. I want you to pray for me. Praise the Lord. Pray for Mother. She was unable to make it today, but she's watching faithfully on uh, Facebook Live, and she sends her offering and her tithing. Praise the Lord. She tried to borrow it from me, but I won't give it to her. She has to pay her own, only, only teasing. But pray for us. We have to speak this afternoon at uh, our church in uh, uh, North Philadelphia, Ambassador Seat of Love, pastored by Pastor Buster Fields. And so I may be a little short this morning. Those of you that are going to go and want to stay here at the church, we are supplying a little snack of some chicken, chicken wings and macaroni salad. Praise the Lord. Tuna salad, macaroni tuna uh, for you. And you can relax until it's time to go. All right. Let the church say amen. amen. I want you to turn with me in your Bibles to Second Chronicles. Uh, the 20th chapter, the book of Second Chronicles, the book of history of the nation of Israel and Judah, uh, chapter 20, and I'll begin reading in your hearing, verses 20 to 24. And uh, we ask that you stand to your feet. The seniors don't have to stand. If you have medical issues, don't stand. But if you're healthy, Please stand for the reverence of the word of God. Second Chronicles chapter 20. When you have it, will you say amen? And they rose early in the morning and went forth into the wilderness of Tekoa. And as they went forth, Jehoshaphat stood and said, Hear me, O Judah, and you inhabitants of Jerusalem. Believe in the Lord your God, so shall you be established. Believe his prophets so shall you prosper. And when he had consulted with the people, he appointed singers unto the Lord, and that should praise the beauty of holiness as they went out before the army to say, Praise the Lord, for his mercy endureth forever. And when they began to sing and to praise the Lord, the Lord set ambushments against the children of Ammon, Moab, and Mount Seir, which were come up against Judah, and they were smitten. For the children of Ammon, Moab, stood up against the inhabitants of Mount Seir, utterly to slay and destroy them. And when they had made an end of the inhabitants of Seir, every one helped to destroy another. And when Judah came towards the watchtower in the wilderness, they looked unto the multitude, and there were dead bodies fallen to the earth and none escaped. Let the church say amen. You may be seated. I'm going to ask the Lord to bless this message and to bless his people. Gracious God and Father, Lord, we love you. We thank you for your wonderful grace that you have lavished upon our lives. Without you, Lord, we couldn't do anything. We praise you and magnify you. Come before your Lord to hear a word from the Lord, because it is through your word that we receive strength and healing and enlightenment. Bless now your people, Lord. Send your anointing power. Minister to us as only you can. Bind the forces of darkness. Bind the demonic world that wants to hinder the word. And let your anointing break off every chain, every yoke, I ask you now in the name of Jesus Christ and those who believe the Lord heard the prayer, let them shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Jesus. 
I want to speak to you from the subject, praise God in the midst of adversity, because my victory is in my praise. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Adversity and adversaries are a fact of life. It is part of our existence as human beings. We're always going to have something that confronts us, something that causes us some kind of distress. You can't live in this world and be untouched from some type of trouble. You can't be in this world and not be affected by something that causes you distress. You have adversaries now and you will face adversaries at some point in your life. There'll be something trying to stop you. There'll be something trying to block your forward momentum. Adversity is defined as a difficult situation or a difficult condition, some type of misfortune, some type of tragedy that a person experiences. Adversity is a period of time in which you are forced to face serious problems or you're forced to face something that is difficult for you to do. It is a time when things are contrary, when things are not working out for you, causing you to have stress in your mind and in your spirit. Adversi adversity makes you feel as though you're helpless. You know, when you're fighting against the forces that are contrary to you. You feel like you're helpless. You feel like you're all alone. But if you know Jesus Christ, you know you'll never be alone. Praise God. Because circumstances and situations can change. They can go from better to worse. They can go from bad to good. But Jesus knows how to turn a situation around. Praise the Lord. He knows how to enter in and to turn the tide on the pressure. He knows how to turn the tide on the tears for Jesus Christ is there for his children. We have to go through these things. Trials and tribulations are necessary. Can I get an amen? <laughs> They're necessary because they produce something in us. It produces the glory of God. The enemy expects you to fall. The enemy expects you to fail. But what the enemy doesn't know is that the hand of Jesus Christ is right there holding you up. Praise the Lord. Encouraging you, telling you that you can make it. It is through much tribulation, the word of God says, that we shall enter into the kingdom of God. Brother Job made a statement, said, man that is born of a woman is a few days and full of trouble. Praise the Lord. And I can say amen to that. <laughs> Difficulty is a part of our lives. Every person is going to have to endure their own individual tests, their own individual trial, and no one shall escape. There is no way around it. Every child of God is going to have to face hostile conditions. Praise the Lord. Things in life that seek to steal your peace, steal your joy. You had a wonderful time in service on Sunday. And by Monday, there's something there waiting for you. Praise the Lord. Trying to make you forget how, what the Lord spoke to you in the service. And if you're not careful, the enemy will attempt to drive you away. There's no sense in going to church. My life is fine, but it's not fine unless Jesus Christ is the captain of your salvation. Unless he is the one that is leading you and guiding you. Praise the Lord. I know if Paul, if Paul stated that we have trouble on every side, yet we're not distressed. We are perplexed, but we're not in despair. 
been persecuted, but I'm not forsaken, been knocked down, cast down, but I'm not destroyed. I'm still here with my testimony. God has been good to me. Oh, yes, he has. Hallelujah. Anybody in the house got that kind of testimony who know the Lord been good to you? Praise the Lord. If it wasn't for the Lord, I don't know where I would be. I don't know what state I would be in. I don't know if I'd be alive. But because of God's goodness, praise the Lord, because of his grace, he continues to sustain us. Oh, thank you, Jesus Christ. There is something, praise God, in a child of God's life that you go through when you're being tested. Praise the Lord. You know what a test is? A test is something that is done to bring out good results or either bad results. The saint is tested. Praise the Lord. You put in a press and squeeze. Nowhere to move. Praise the Lord. And the enemy whispering in your ear telling you, it's all right, just give up. But you can't give up. Come too far now to give up. Oh, hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I've been put in a fire to be burnt. The enemy trying to destroy me. But Jesus is perfecting me. He is completing the process. Because he is the one that started the process. So he that had begun a good work in you shall perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. Oh, hallelujah. I may be troubled. I may be perplexed. I may be persecuted and cast down. But I still have my joy. Praise the Lord. I'm talking about joy with tears going down your face. Praise, because you know the Lord is on your side. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. One thing I've learned for sure is that trouble, distress, and tribulation is going to bless me. Have you ever seen, we've had this week and last week, storms that came in our vicinity and in our region. And uh, Friday, praise the Lord, one of those days, it was, it was, it was dark, but it even got darker. Praise the Lord. And, and you know when the clouds get dark and the sun is blotted out, you know a storm is coming. And you prepare and take cover for the storm. But don't you know after the storm is over, oh, hallelujah, after the wind stopped blowing, the rain stopped descending, the clouds move out the way, here come the sun. Oh, thank you, Jesus. I thank God for the sun in my life. Praise the Lord. Because when the storm clouds appear, I still know the sun is still shining somewhere. I can praise God in the midst of my adversity. Oh, yes, I can. Praise the Lord. It doesn't matter what direction your storm comes from. Jesus Christ is right there in the midst. He's going to make it turn in for my good. Don't you know people have tried to stop you? People have talked about you behind your back to your face on side of you. And the Lord turn it around and make it for your good. Well, thank you, Jesus. You got to know Jesus is working in your life. Romans chapter 8 and verse 28 and says, it says, and we know, not we think, not we speculate. We know that all things work together for the good of them that love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose. Praise the Lord. He going to make it good. Tribulation is working for my good. Trouble is working for my good. Now it doesn't feel like it's good. It hurts. It's painful. It's stressful. But the Lord is in the midst of it. Oh, hallelujah. Yes, he is. Praise the Lord. Every saint is going to have, and I have to move on. Every saint is going to have a Goliath who is trying to defeat them. Every saint is going to have a Saul who is hating against them. Every saint is going to have a Balaam trying to curse you and stop you from moving forward. But it doesn't matter because Jesus Christ is with me. 
And as long as God is on your side, it doesn't matter who comes against you. The, the giant Goliath, he had to fall. The, Saul, the hater, he had to cease to exist. So, and Balaam, the cursor, praise God. Every time he opened his mouth, instead of a curse, here come another blessing. Well, thank you, Jesus. That's what God does. That's how God operates. So the scriptural text that I read to you this morning concerning Jehoshaphat and the army of Israel. So praise the Lord. The King Jehoshaphat was faced with an enemy that was greater than he. So a nations who combined their forces together and made an allegiance with other tribes to make a unified effort. Well, thank you, Jesus, to defeat the nation of Judah. There are a few things we can learn from this. So each of us have some kind of enemy who does not want you to succeed in life. Who does not want you to succeed in God? They want you to become a failure. They want you to become a has-been. Secondly, not only do you have an enemy, but your enemy will recruit other enemies. So, praise the Lord in a combined effort to fight against you. Now, Jehoshaphat was a king who sought to please the Lord. So, and to do that which was right in the sight of God. God was his desire. God was his delight. And whenever you put the Lord as a priority in your life, you better believe that the enemy will try to stop you. He was a unique king who was lifted up in the ways of God. Uh, he was not arrogant. He was not filled with self-importance, but he had the people of God on his mind. The, he was not excited about, praise the Lord, the things of life, but he set his life as a pattern to serve Jehovah. The, not only did he seek the Lord for himself, but he encouraged the kingdom of Judah, the, who had lost their excitement about the Lord. He exhorted to them to become enthused and to serve the Lord with all of his heart. When you read the history of Jehoshaphat, he wasn't just a king who sat on the throne. No, he wanted the people to be in position to receive the blessings of the Lord. Yep. He set up reforms and, praise God, tore down the false places of worship. Yep. He tore down the groves and destroyed the high places yep. who the people would go and worship other gods. Yep. Praise the Lord. He knew that if there was a true revival, that the people would get excited. Yep. That's what we need in every one of our lives to revisit where the Lord brought us from. Uh, praise the Lord. Go back 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60 years and remember where you were when the Lord saved you. Yep. And then evaluate where you are now. Yep. You can say he brought me from a mighty long way. Yep. Oh, yes, he did. He knew the people needed to get close to God. Yep. So he dispatched the priests and the Levites. So, to go into the villages and towns so, and to teach them the principles of the word of God. So, well, thank you, Jesus. So, he told them, share the word with the people so, so that the people can be enlightened so, and the people's hearts turn to God. So, there was one problem in Judah. Yep. There was homosexuality. Yep. There were places where the Sodomites gathered. Yep. He taught down those houses yep. because they were corrupting the people. Yep. There were some things in our lives yep. that we got to tear them down yep. so that we can serve the Lord in gladness. Yep. Oh, thank you, Jesus. 
Praise God, Jehoshaphat that said unto the people, that, Praise the Lord, we are the Lord's children. And these other nations want to come in and try to destroy us. So you got King Amen. You got King Moab. You got the king of Mount Seir. That armies are larger than ours. And they're marching towards us. Oh, thank you, Jesus. But Jehoshaphat said, We know our Jehovah is able to give us the victory. And he's going to do it through praise. He going to do it through magnifying him. He got the choirs together. He got the musicians together. He got the singers together. He got the dulcimer and harp players. Got the timbrel and dance. Got the high sounding cymbals. And put them out in front of the soldiers. Praise the Lord. And as they were marching. They said praise the Lord. Because his mercy endure forever. And the Lord heard them praising him. And the Lord heard them singing. So Jehovah looked at this army. He looked at these other soldiers. Praise the Lord and said to himself. They're not going to stop this praise. So Jehovah. As you read the word of God, say he set ambushments, he set booby traps, he set pitfalls, and when the soldiers of the enemy's army got close, they began to look at each other. They're supposed to be allies, but they're fighting against themselves. One army turned on the other army. And when they killed that army, they turned on themselves. They slaughtered each other. By now, here come King Jehoshaphat with his army. They praise in the Lord, saying, Thank you, Jehovah, for what you've done. Thank you, Jehovah, for where you brought us from. Jehovah, you've been good. Jehovah, you are wonderful. Jehovah, you are marvelous. Jehovah, you're altogether lovely. When they got there, all they saw was the enemy's armies. They were dead. Well, thank you, Jesus. You don't have to fight your battles. You don't have to stress over your enemies. The Lord will fight for you. The Lord will deliver you. Oh, yes, he will. That's why it's important to give him praise. Praise the Lord in the good times. Praise the Lord in the bad times. Praise them. You're obligated. Praise them. You're saved. What I like about praise, a premeditated praise. That's when I think of the goodness of Jesus and all he done for me. I got it in my mind. Can't wait to get to church, but the best praise is a valley praise. When you're down, when you're out, and you're still, give him glory, because the Lord has been good to you. The Lord saved your soul. The Lord filled you with the Holy Ghost. Anybody here want to praise the Lord? Anybody here want to magnify him? He's been good. He's been good. He's wonderful. He's marvelous. He's wonderful. 
Hallelujah! 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 Oh, hallelujah! Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah! 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 Oh, thank you. Go ahead and praise. Go ahead and praise. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, yes, Lord. The valley praise. The valley praise is when you can't go no lower. When you have fallen to a place and you're not sure if you're going to come out, all your circumstances, all your situation, all your avenues seem like they're cut off. But in the midst of that valley, you remember that Jesus Christ is God of all. Who has all power in heaven and in earth and that's when you praise the Lord from your soul it's not just words now it's my being when I say hallelujah I mean it from my spirit I mean it from the soul hallelujah glory to his name Oh, thank you, Jesus. Come on, let's praise. Let's have a praise party. Come on, stand to your feet. Stand to your feet. Stand up. Stand up. Clap your hands. Stand up. Praise, praise the Lord. Praise him for his goodness. Praise him for his mighty acts. Praise him for his excellent greatness. Praise him with the sound of the trumpet. Praise him with the trembling dance. Praise him, praise him. Praise him. Praise him. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Oh, yes, Lord. Hallelujah. You all can be seated. Huh. You know, some of us are, are experiencing certain things in our lives because we have ceased to give God praise. We act as if what we have accomplished, what we have been able to, to purchase we get, take credit for that praise the Lord that's why we use the pronoun my that's my house that's my car that's my money in the bank that's my this my that my that but if it wasn't for Jesus Christ you wouldn't have none of that and the Lord is so gracious. He gives to us. He favors us. But all he wants from us in return is an acknowledgement of his goodness. To just say, thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. When is the last time you say hallelujah? <laughs> oh, I mean outside of church. Hallelujah. That's all the Lord wants from us. He's been your mother, your father, your keeper, your shelter, your provider, your sustainer, your food, your bread, your water, your protector, your policeman, your supervisor. He's been everything to you. Hallelujah. He's been all that. He's been all that and more. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, 
to sing a song he's everything he's everything to me he's everything he's everything to me he's my mother my father my sister and brother oh he's everything to me he is everything He's everything to me. He's everything. He's everything to me. He's my mother, my father, my sister and brother. He's everything to me. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, yes, that's a testimony about how God is so all-encompassing our lives. Jesus Christ went to the cross of Calvary to die for you, for me, so that our sins would be forgiven. He died and bought the image of God as a reality in the lives of people. Jesus loves you. I don't know why you're running from him, but he loves you. He's invited you to share his joy. And all you have to do is surrender. All you have to do is say to the Lord, Lord, I'm tired, and I want you to receive me, and Jesus Christ will receive you. Bless you now. Will you stand to your feet? There may be someone here today that is in need of prayer. Prayer is God's response to obedience and faith. He ministers in the midst of prayer. Things that cannot be accomplished naturally can be wrought through the power of prayer. So this morning, if there's somebody, someone who has a situation in their life and they have struggled and struggled, tried to solve it, but got no remedy, try Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Jesus Christ can do it for you. If you're here this morning,